Hi booktube, welcome back or to my channel for the first time. My name is Stephanie at Steph Lives in Pages. And today I have another bookstore vlog for you. Book bestie Pam and I traveled to Lancaster, Pennsylvania and we went to Pocket Books Shop and it is truly phenomenal. I cannot wait for you to see the inside of this store. It is every book lover's dream. And you know what? <laughs> I really need to find some new taglines and phrases for these videos because every time I go to a new indie bookstore, I'm like, this is a book lover's dream. They all are, okay? But every single time I go to a new one, I'm blown away. The love that goes into these indie bookstores is truly next level. Like we can't find that at any chain store and that's truly the motivation behind why we are doing this project of filming these indie bookstores for you guys. So also we sat down with the, own, well, one and two, you'll see two of the three owners of this bookstore. It's been open for about four months. Again, can't wait for you to see the inside. It's so amazing. It has a wraparound porch. It is so aesthetic. Love, love, love. If you hang around to the end, you will see our little interview with the owners. And then once again, the hilarious lack of self-control in a bookstore book bestie Pam has filmed her book haul for you all and she's truly hilarious so stick around to the end for that and then after Pam I will show you a couple of books that I got and that'll be that.
First, I do want to ask, how long have you guys been here? Not long. Yeah. yeah? <laughs> Four months. Are you serious? Yeah. Yeah, we opened April 30th. Yeah. And we only got the keys to the building February 1st. Yeah. So, um, yeah, it's all very new. Very fast. <laughs> what is your favorite book in the store? I brought so many options, <laughs> Jessica. What do you What do you want? I'm gonna go with A Deadly Education right now, just because I just reread this. Um, the third one comes out in like two weeks, I think. Have you read this? I have not. Okay, it's so so good. We have a little like shelf talker that just says if you're looking for a book to read and have no idea what you want, like this is the one you should buy. Um, it's about a magic school um, where magical children are sent because so many monsters want to kill them in the world that they like can't be safe in the world, so they go to this school where the school is also trying to kill them, but their <laughs> odds are better there than in the real world. And it is so dark and good. It's so dark, it's so good. It has the most compelling characters yeah. and it develops quickly from just a really cool fantasy book about a magic school to a trenchant critique of capitalism yeah. in like the coolest way. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it absolutely rules. And we are dying because nobody will give us advanced copies of the third one. They have it under complete lock and key. Yeah, but it comes out in like two weeks, so now's the perfect time to read this one and then the sequel The Last Graduate. They are like impeccable. Like, you will love them. What is the most popular book in the store at the moment? Hands down, they never learn. Um, not, I think, because it is popular everywhere in the world, but because we hand sell it five <laughs> times a day. Uh, the one sentence summary is <laughs> every year Dr. Scarlett Clark picks the worst man at her university and murders him, and she has gotten away with it for many, many years, but now they're launching an investigation into all of these unexplained deaths. She just like kills one man every year and gets away, like incredible. Impeccable, absolutely good. It's so, so good. Um, it's queer, it's a thriller. Yeah. We shelve it under great because, for spooky season. Yeah, it's perfect for spooky season. We believe in scary. a large we, we believe in expanding your horizons when it comes to horror because people are scared of horror. Um, and so I like to bring them to this and say you can start with this and then we'll go from there. It's incredible. It's an incredible twist that even though I've read it multiple times, I still gasp every single time. Thanks. Tell us what inspired the name. Yeah. Um, well, as I said, we are jump in people. Like we literally went from daydreaming about maybe opening a bookstore to putting in an offer on a building and forming an LLC within a month, um, which is bonkers. Um, and so to form the LLC, we needed a name. And so we literally just sat in our group chat with just the three of us one night, like literally all three of us are just laying in our own bedrooms. Um, just bouncing names off of each other. And Jessica suggested pocketbooks. And I don't know why she suggested, it just was like one of the five million things she suggested. And we immediately were like, oh, that's it, like pocketbooks, it's so cute, right? Because we love the idea of like books that are small and tiny and that you carry with you and that are like your favorite thing and that can fit in your pocket. Um, we liked the kind of historical resonance of, you know, quarter-sized books that could fit inside of women's dresses um, at a time, you know, when women were discouraged from reading novels. This was like a very common practice. Um, we liked the, the, the resonance with like a purse, like a grandma pocketbook, um, because we want, we, we said from the beginning that we are Nora Ephraim Poor, that is our, our aesthetic. Now I don't even know what I was saying. Something about pocketbooks and grandmas. <laughs> oh yeah, we, we said we really want to be Nora Ephron Poor, right? Like this is, you know, we are living our You've Got Mail dreams. And so we wanted it to be as cute and cozy as possible. And like, what's cozier than a little, little purse, a little pocketbook? <laughs> the best and the worst part of owning, working, and a bookstore. Mm. The best part is literally, oh man, it's literally everything. I want to I want to say something more eloquent than that, but honestly, we, the, so the three of us, Julie, who's not here, Jessica, and myself, we started the bookstore because we decided during the pandemic we were done delaying our happiness, and we wanted to 
just live the life that made us as happy as humanly possible, which for us is being surrounded by books and being in a bookstore and talking about books and making everything cute and just bringing like cool, queer, feminist, anti-racist stuff to the masses. And we did it and we uh, absolutely have refused to compromise so far. So we don't do anything we don't like doing um, is just the long and the short of it. Like we only stop books we love. We don't stop books we don't believe in. We don't do events we don't believe in. We are obviously very clear in our uh, political alignments and we just commit and it, it's perfect. It's the most fun. Is there a worst part? Um, taking out the recycling? That's, okay. that's like literally the worst part is that we like folding up the cardboard boxes. The worst. And that's not bad. <laughs> All things considered, that's not that bad. What is a book that you would give anything to read for the first time? Okay. okay. So, <laughs> my like real answer that I didn't bring is A Court of Most and Fury, let's be honest with ourselves. <laughs> um, 100%. Second choice, Gideon the Ninth. Have you read? No. Oh, oh my god. Okay, Gideon the Ninth. Incredible. The third book comes out on Tuesday. I am dying. Uh, tagline is Lesbian Necromancers Explore a Haunted Mansion in Space. The second book, Carol the Night, is so incredible that when Jessica and I finished reading it, we literally that day went out and got a black cat so that we could name it Harold. Like we like this book is everything to us. Um, it's incredible. It's queer. It's goth it's in space but also it's a mystery but also it's bones I, I can't describe it we just read the wiki page to remind ourselves what happened in these books that we love so much and we were like what like i i literally think tamsin weir is a genius like this is she's possibly an actual bona fide give her macarthur genius <laughs> I almost grabbed that, and then I was like, I really need to rein it in. No, you don't. I'm dreading it. <laughs> no, you don't. I love Gideon. We sell this one constantly because we're just like, who can resist? Lesbian necromancers explore a haunted mansion in space. What? You read it, and you have no idea what is happening, and then you read the second book, and it's like you didn't even read the first one because you're like, wait, what? Okay, thanks for adding to my TBR. Yeah! <laughs> Is there anything you'd love for shoppers to know about you or your store before they get here? I think, I mean, we try to be very consistent. So I think before you even get here, you know what we're about. Um, we've got the signs, we've got the signs, we've got everything that kind of tells you what's, what's the deal before you get here. Um, but if there's anything that we want our customers to know, it's that we are here because we desperately want to find you a book to love. Like that is our, our tagline, but it's really what we believe. Like we're here to find you a book to love. And we really think there are books that are perfect for you that you maybe haven't heard of or that you've been nervous to read or that are outside of your comfort zone or that talk about things you maybe are uncertain of or just want to know more about. Um, and we want Pocket Books to be a place where you can come and learn and expand your horizons and fall in love with the book. So I've had extensive media training. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, mammon issues! Okay. You're probably going to hear Juno in this uh, because she's next to me. I tried to take her out to poop and she didn't want to. And now I'm pretty sure she has to poop. So she's probably going to hop and puff next to me for a few minutes. Um, we're just gonna deal with it. You just want to play me in because I don't want to do an intro. I'm too awkward and weird for intros. So yeah, so these are the books that I purchased at um, Pocket Books in Lancaster. Uh, the first book that I bought was Ruby Bridges, This Is Your Time. Uh, this is just the story of, it's a really small book. I don't know if it's for children or not, but the story of Ruby Bridges just gets me like choked up every time and I thought, oh wow, like if I need something that's gonna make me sad and cry, that's gonna be a perfect go-to. 
Um, but if you don't know the story of Ruby Bridges, she is um, a little girl or was a little girl who went to school post segregation and the president had to assign her U.S. Marshals to protect her when she was at school uh, because people were so enraged that she was trying to get an education at a formerly white school. Um, the next book that I got is Bonicula. Uh, not for me, um, probably not my style, but this is a um, graphic novel. Uh, I think it's for, yeah, a graphic novel for kids. I grabbed this for my nephew because he loves graphic novels and his grandmother um, always says that that doesn't count as reading and I disagree. So I'm gonna give it to him in front of her um, because I am the contrarian in the family. Also, it's a perfect theme right now because I currently have seven rabbits. If anyone needs a rabbit, let me know. Uh, I rescued one rabbit uh, that was abandoned in a wooded area near my house and it had babies. And then a few days later, I found the dad. So we've been rocking out with all these rabbits and my life is in shambles because of it. The next book that I grabbed was The House Next Door. Uh, this was in the horror section. And the reason that I grabbed it is because there was just a little blurb um, basically from one of the owners um, recommending the book. So I just wanted to grab it uh, because usually when like a bookstore owner recommends something, it's probably gonna be pretty good. Um, also, it's spooky season, so why not buy a spooky read? Even though like my whole life is spooky season, um, hence Freddy Krueger behind me, uh, my whole house is just like creepy themed and it embarrasses my mother, so that's just a bonus. So the next thing that I got is, or the next book that I got is Lisa Jules, The Family Remains. This is the sequel to Lisa Jules, The Family Upstairs. I like simp for Lisa Jewel so hard. Um, I am obsessed with her. I follow her on every social media platform. I typically, and not in a, when I say obsessed, not in a creepy way, um, but I totally think she looks like Celine Dion. Um, I don't know. I just love her. I love her work. And I typically pre-order her books, uh, but I didn't for some reason for this one, I guess, because I was like, oh, let me go into a bookstore and buy another book uh, because I don't have enough. Um, and if you've seen any of Steph's videos before uh, with my what I purchased when I went with her to a bookstore, you will know that when I go to a bookstore, I just have absolutely no self-control, honey. Um, and I just buy a ridiculous amount of books. My whole house is just full of books. And I've actually been like this uh, forever. Um, my mom always tells me that when I was like three, I, um, she would go into my bedroom to wake me up in the morning and I wouldn't ever be in my bed because I would sneak into my closet at night to read books and my closet would just be full of my books with me sleeping there. So, uh, that's where my problem began and I don't want to get help for it. So the next book that I grabbed was They Never Learn. I had already made all of my purchases and then Steph decided to interview, uh, the owners of the bookstore and they recommended this and said how it is about a woman who chooses a man every year that a terrible man not like a good man um to kill and when they said that i just like glazed i stopped listening at that point and i was like i'm just gonna buy that that sounds like my my style um so i'm excited to read that and the last book that i got is the book of cold cases by simone st james she also wrote the sundown motel uh, and that's the reason that I bought that. I'm, my dog's next to me licking me. Um, the reason that I bought it is just, just because I love the Sundown Motel. Um, again, another like spooky read because that's just my whole whole life. It's my aesthetic. It's my aura. It's everything. So um, this I wanted to grab just to see if this is going to be as good as the Sundown Motel. And I have really high expectations. So that finishes the books that I grabbed. Um, I also got some stickers while I was there. And, um, you know, when we went to the Crooked Shelf bookstore, I remember saying it was like the Scholastic Book Fair for adults. And I felt like this was like also the Scholastic Book Fair for like feminists. Like it just had, it just had like the best vibe and it just had the coolest stuff so I grabbed some stickers uh, and I'll just show you those quickly uh, the first one I got is live laugh loathe uh, this is gonna go great in my house I also have a live laugh hail Satan sign uh, that embarrasses my mom um, I have this lovely men um, with a trash bag no uh, I don't think I need to explain that anymore 
Uh, I grabbed this abortion access for all sticker. Uh, they also had it in t-shirts, but unfortunately they didn't have it in my size, but that's okay because I'm probably gonna be back multiple times until they're finally like, do you need an intervention? You're, you're buying a lot of books. Um, so hopefully I'll find it in my size the next time I go there. Uh, the next one that I got is this Daria sticker. Uh, Daria is like my spirit animal, always has been, and that was super nostalgic to find that. Um, I also grabbed this dog in a ghost. I don't know why I couldn't think of what this was in a ghost costume. Uh, and the only reason that I grabbed this is because it looks like my dog. She's next to me, but she's definitely not going to get up because she's stubborn. But I brought backup. So this is what my dog looks like. And this is the sticker. So like pretty close. And um, Juno also has a full tail. So she's looking at me now like, why are you talking about me? Hello. Um, yeah, so I got super excited about that. I'm still pretty excited about it. And the final thing that I bought is this, uh, sticker with just a bunch of horror themed items or things on it and, um, some of my favorite men. So that is everything that I bought at, um, Pocket Books in Lancaster. And stuff. I'm going to need you to just play me out because I don't do well with that. First of all, wasn't that bookstore freaking amazing? obsessed with it I cannot wait to go back their children's section was so amazing they had this spot where you can pick a book tag that they have there and purchase a book to help stock a teacher's library I love that so much also another thing that I'm learning about these indie bookstores is their kids section is so diverse and I really love that especially for I'm, I'm pretty sure I mentioned this in my last bookstore vlog but we live in a small town and my son, I want to make sure he's diversified. And I love being able to do that in the form of books while also supporting small indie bookstores. Love that so much. And also freaking Pam, she's so funny. <laughs> I wish you guys could know her in real life because she makes me laugh out loud on almost a daily basis. <laughs> So you watched the interview, you saw how good they were at selling books. They got Pam, they got me, I got two of their recs. I'm not gonna talk about them because Austin did such an amazing job. And Jessica, I'm pretty sure she talked about one too. Um, Gideon the Ninth and a dead, Deadly Education. And then this was 15% off and you know your girl is a Nesta Stan. So I had to get the orange cover. Thank you guys so much. Oh. I also got a sticker and a bookmark, but I don't know where I put those already. I got the serial killer sticker like Pam did, and I also got a chicken nugget bookmark because I love, I'm obsessed with bookmarks. I love bookmarks so much. Do you guys like bookmarks? Are you a dog ear? Get a bookmark. Oh, I'm gonna make you a bookmark. Are you a spine cracker? But anyway, thank you so much for watching. It is always a blast doing these bookstore vlogs. We have another one coming up in October. So please like this video, subscribe to my channel, and I would love to be friends with you on TikTok and Instagram at Steph Lives and Pages. And I am on Twitter a little bit. You can find me at Steph Lives Pages. I had to remove the in for that. Um, but again, would love to be friends with you on all the socials. Have a great day. And again, 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 again. Thank you so much for watching. Bye. Tell me what you're reading in the comments.